Hi everyone, my name is Annie. I'm from Wild Birds Unlimited in Westchester. And we are really excited because this weekend is the Great Backyard Bird Count. So for those of you who are participating, and we hope that you all decide to do that, I thought it might be helpful if I gave you some information and some images of the most common backyard birds you're gonna see in this area. As I said, the Great Backyard Bird Count is February 12th through the 15th. And please go to their website for more information about how to join um, and how to track your birds. So the, one of the most common birds you're gonna see in this area, one of the most beautiful is the Northern Cardinal. They are very common at feeders. Um, they're typically ground feeders. So you're gonna see them on the ground, but you might also see them on tray feeders and hopper feeders, which have big enough perches for them. As you can see, the male here um, is that bright, brilliant red with the orange beak and the female is more of a brownish, again, with that orange beak. And they both have little crests on top of their heads. Um, on each of these slides, I have food that the particular bird likes. I'm not gonna go over those right now, but you are um, more than welcome to use this as a resource that you can go back to. Um, so the next one is blue jays. Blue jays are larger than cardinals. They have that brilliant blue feathers on the back. They also have a crest on top of their head. They're very loud um, and they love acorns and peanuts in the shell. Um, Carolina chickadees. Carolina chickadees, they are this small little round bird. They're very cute. Um, they have the black tops have their heads as well as that black kind of right under their beaks. Um, they commonly will be coming back and forth between um, the feeders and the tree. They take turns with one another um, and they'll come to a variety of different types of feeders, but they're usually the one of the first ones to come once you put a feeder up. Then the white breast and net hatch, it's, it's similar um, to the Carolina chickadee in coloring. Um, the white breast and net hatch is gonna be a little bit more narrow. Its beak too is gonna be longer and a bit pointier. Also, one of the most distinguishing features is that they creep head first down tree trunks. So if you notice a bird with that behavior, it is probably a white breasted nuthatch. What they typically do is they take one seed and they fly to a nearby tree to open it. Um, and they often will just visit the feeder one bird at a time. The tufted titmouse, which is one of my favorites, they often will also do that kind of back and forth between the feeder and the tree. So they don't stick around at feeders very long. They usually come in, grab, and then go back to the tree. They have this very brilliant kind of um, gray on their backs and they often are also have this little crest, this little tuft of gray feathers and this very distinct little black eye. We have the Carolina Wren. The Carolina Wren is a cute little bird. Um, it brown, different kind of shades of brown. Its tail is often sticking up like this. This checkered kind of brown tail is often kind of pointing up. It also has this kind of white stripe right above its eyes. Um, it really likes suet as well as peanut pieces. Then we have house finches. House finches are very abundant at my house at least. Um, they're often found in tree uh, branches, shrubs, and on feeders. They often come in groups. The orange has this reddish orange face on it, the male does, I'm sorry, and then the female has this kind of brown streaked face and they both have this brown um, streaked belly as well as back. And then we have the American goldfinch. The American goldfinch um, is a bit smaller than the house finch and though we commonly think of the goldfinch being this bright yellow color, often in the winter they are this more kind of drab olivey color. So they still have a little bit of that yellow to them, but they're not going to be this kind of bright yellow that we think of. Also, the um, goldfinch, if you're kind of having a hard time distinguishing it from a house finch, you can look at the very distinct black stripes that it has on its back. Um, and then you will also kind of see these usually at Niger feeders, thistle th feeders, um, or sunflower chips. Downy woodpeckers, so downy woodpeckers are the smallest type of woodpeckers. So you're going to see these hopping around on the tree trunks and branches. Um, they go to suet feeders and they have this really pretty black and white kind of pattern on their back. The males have a little bit of red on their um, tops of the heads, but the females do not. A bit bigger than the downy woodpecker, we have the red-bellied woodpecker. They are also often found hopping around on tree trunks and branches. They will go to suet feeders. Um, and as you can see, they have this nice little red on their tip of their heads. They have long beaks and they also have this black and white pattern on their backs, which people kind of refer to as their zebra stripes. 
And it's called red bellied because there's a little bit of red right on its belly. Um, there's actually a woodpecker whose whole head is red. That's called the red headed woodpecker, but they're not as common in this area. The northern flicker is even bigger than the downy and the red bellied. They're often found foraging on the ground, but you can also see them climbing up and down trees. You often see them on suet feeders. It is, like I said, a larger woodpeckers. It's got this black spots on its belly and its back. It's got um, the gray head, and then it has this yellow um, kind of streaks under its wings that you really see when it's flying. We are lucky enough in the winter to get dark-eyed juncos. Dark-eyed juncos are on the ground. They're ground feeders. They will come in flocks. You'll get a lot of them at one time. And they really like millet, sunflower chips, and cracked corn. And you can see they kind of have that, the male has that more of that dark black and gray with a little white on the belly, whereas a female is a little bit lighter and then muted gray. Morning doves are very common in this area. They're usually found on the ground. So they're ground feeders as well. They're kind of more plump bird and they have that distinct black eye. And as they walk, they kind of bob their heads. American robins, um, they're here year round. They, um, they're foraging, so they don't really come to feeders very often. They mostly are going for insects, but they will if you put a little bit of um, like suet um, on the bottom of a tree, they'll come to it as well as they might come to some fruit too. And robins have that nice orange um, brown breast to them. European starlings, if you have a big flock of nuisance birds in your yard, there's a good chance they're European starlings. They can be found feeders on the ground. They're kind of found everywhere. The European starling has a black, uh, purple, blue iridescent feathers, but it has these white spots all over it in the winter and this more orange beak in the winter too. They tend to be aggressive um, and really they like all food um, except for safflower. So if you are getting invaded with them and you would like not to, you can try safflower. The house sparrow is um, not native to this area, but they're pretty much found everywhere and they're also aggressive and they come in large groups. So they're about the size of a house finch, a little bit bigger. Um, and the male has this gray top to his head. The female is more brown. The male also has this, um, this black right under its beak. And they eat pretty much everything, corn, sunflower seeds, insects. And so I didn't really go over a ton of the food ideas, but if you are just looking for something really basic to get started and something that will attract the widest variety of birds, I would suggest doing one of these blends. This is our choice blend at Wild Birds and it has striped sunflower, black oil sunflower, it has sunflower chips and peanuts in it. So it's got a really good variety. Um, if you'd prefer not to have shells, you can do our no mess, no millet blend, which is um, just peanuts and it has sunflower chips and tree nuts in it. And as far as choosing a suet, I really like the super suet. It's rendered beef fat, so it's really high in fat, which is really important this time of year. Um, and it also has nuts in it and mealworms too. If you need more help with identification, I would suggest checking out the Merlin app. So Cornell has an app, it's the Merlin app, and it helps you identify the birds in your yard. You can also always take a picture of the bird um, and come in to our stores and we can help you identify it too. And we can help you figure out more about what types of food and what types of feeders you think would um, work best in your yard. So I hope you have a great time um, counting your birds this weekend. And yeah, hope to see you soon. Bye.